We all have been in those rank games where our teammates don't have mics, are constantly raging, or simply don't communicate anything to us. As frustrating as these situations are, it is important to still practice effective communication with your team at all costs. With Valorant being a 5v5 first person shooter, communication is one of if not the most important aspect of competitive play. This brings up a very important question. Do you know how to properly communicate? What is going on ProGrads family? It is your host Sergeant Frost, and in this video we are going to be diving into the fundamentals of being a good teammate, with communication taking the spotlight. After watching this, don't forget to send this video to all the Instalock duelists in your games. Maybe we can make the community a better place, if only a little bit. First things first, if you want to be a good teammate and ranked, you must learn how to communicate effectively. So what does effective communication look like? First of all, we need to look into when you should make a call out. It is important to keep in mind that communication is a tool for exchanging information. So you don't want to communicate literally everything and potentially give useless information that could jam up comms for the rest of the team, which is certainly not helpful. So when is it a good time to call something out? Well, this is dependent on a couple of considerations. First, how important is the information you have to the current status of your team? For example, if you die lurking while your team is executing on a bomb site, giving too much information about his whereabouts and HP is not very relevant at the moment. Perhaps wait for a moment and communicate it when people have finished the execute and they are currently in post plan. Now, if you are executing on a bomb site with your team and you die, that is information you want to immediately communicate to your team as it is directly applicable to their current situation. It's always important to think about whether the information you have is important or whether it's just extra chatter. As a general rule, callouts and positions are usually good things to calm, but you don't need to calm about whiffing a kill before you tell your teammates where the enemies are, or complain about getting timing before you call the enemy's position. The next thing you need to consider when learning about how to effectively communicate is that the tone of your voice matters. With that being said, your tone of voice should not stay constant throughout the entire match and should change from situation to situation depending on urgency. For example, if you die from an opponent fast flanking, your tone of voice should be upbeat and stern so that your team understands the urgency of the situation. This is not a tone of voice you want to use at all times, as this urgent tone of voice could potentially make your teammates lose focus if you're calming for something that they think is urgent but is actually not immediately important. Let's say you are in a post plant and you are killed by a rotator while lurking. Instead of using an urgent tone of voice, you want to use a calm informative tone of voice. This way your teammate can still concentrate on the impending site retake and not be distracted by the urgent communication. Okay, I think we all understand why and when your tone of voice should change, as well as when you should be calling out certain things. So what else could you be calling out? Anyone who has any sort of ranked experience has had that one teammate that flashes you right off the angle you are holding. This is pretty annoying and is something that happens almost exclusively due to lack of communication. One of the most important things to call out is your utility usage. This is something that you want to over communicate if anything. If you are a controller, what are you smoking? When are you smoking it? What angles are not covered by your smoke? If you're an initiator, what did your utility clear? Where could the enemies be? If you're a duelist, what are you flashing? When are you flashing? If you are a sentinel, did your tripwire break? Did someone trigger your alarm bot? All of these things can convey some sort of information that could help your team, and could even hurt your team if you don't convey it consistently. Another aspect of players that goes hand in hand with this is calling out the enemy utility usage. If you hear an enemy Sova droning, that is something important to call out to your teammate to make sure you don't get revealed by the drone. The higher you get in ranked, the more fast paced the game becomes and certain aspects of play might go over some of your teammates' heads. In order to avoid these type of situations, it is important to go out of your way to call out any piece of information you may obtain from round to round. Doing so will make your teammates' lives a lot easier and can also support more communication from everyone, which will result in better coordination overall. Similarly to calling out your utility usage, it is also extremely important to tell your teammates what you are doing before you do it. By always asking or telling your teammates what you plan on doing before you do it, you will always allow your teammates to better support you, which directly helps your team in many ways. Additionally, you can also coordinate with your teammates if you communicate what you're doing and what you want them to do with you. For example, if you plan on flashing out a smoke to quickly retake a site, you definitely want to let your teammates know that you're about to initiate the retake. If you don't tell them, your team might not be able to follow up with you to get the essential trades needed to successfully retake the bomb site. This fundamental part of communication is arguably the most important skill to master. If you can frequently coordinate plays with your teammates and talk through your play with your team before you attempt to execute it, you will see firsthand just how effective communication can be in winning your ranked games. Which leads us into our question of the day. Today's question is, if you could choose one trait that all your ranked teammates will have, what would it be? Personally, I think that if people were just kinder to each other, Valorant ranked would be a much better experience for everyone. Sometimes I feel like positive vibes just makes the game 10 times more fun to play. And when we're all having fun, we naturally play better too. Let us know what you would choose in the comments section down below. 
Now, let's jump right back into the video. Now that we've established how to effectively communicate, let's also consider the situations that can affect your communication with your teammates, which is losing your cool. Most people refer to this as playing on tilt or tilting. It doesn't go without being said that tilting negatively affects your gameplay as you're not playing in the right mindset. I think we all know how bad it is to tilt in game, so it is equally important that you don't put your teammates on tilt. In order to avoid this, you need to learn how to address problems with your team without being confrontational. Although this is challenging, mastering ways to address problems in a constructive way is essential to maintaining a positive environment for your team. For example, let's say your teammate flashes you off an angle that you are holding and it causes you to die. Despite this being extremely frustrating, the way you address this issue could be the difference between your team solving the problem or turning it into a shouting match. So how do you properly address this situation? Well, one way is to just not say anything. Most likely, your teammate knows that they made a mistake and won't do it next time. If the problem is something that keeps happening, then try to bring it up in a nice way. For example, if your teammate flashes you off an angle, rather than calling them out for being unaware of what you were doing and causing you to die, simply ask him something along the lines of, hey, next time you flash, can you call it out beforehand rather than just throwing it? This achieves two things. First, it allows you to tell him he made a mistake without directly telling him he made a mistake. Secondly, you word it as a request, so you're not forcing him to change his play, only asking him for a favor next time. Usually, people aren't toxic if treated with respect, but conversations can quickly turn sour if you speak in an aggressive way. So, personally attacking them or calling out their mistakes directly will almost always cause conflict. This is a significantly better way to handle these situations rather than confronting them directly. Another aspect that goes into this concept is not nitpicking at teammates' micro-mistakes, because it's typically quite annoying to be backseat gamed and judged. A good example of this would be if you are spectating a teammate and you watched him whip all of his shots on an enemy player. Rather than making fun of him for something that he clearly knows he messed up on, there is no point in making a comment about his play as there is nothing he can fix about whiffing his shots. Just say, nice try, and then move on to the next situation. The more you can avoid confrontational conversations with your team, the greater the morale will be amongst your team, and the more success you will have throughout the match. Who knows, maybe he will pull off a massive clutch in later rounds to win you the game. Picking your teammates up after their mistakes is a great way to keep your whole team in the game, and therefore increases your own chances of winning the game. As we've already discussed, not tilting is very important to having a successful match. Even if you can avoid tilting, that doesn't mean your teammates can always avoid tilting. In the event that your teammates do tilt, it is important to know ways you can get them back in the game. One of these ways is reassuring them and taking their focus off the past rounds. For example, if one of your teammates is super tilted and they're clearly being affected by it, remind him that you guys still have rounds to play and a comeback is always possible. Another way to get your teammates off tilt is to let them know that unlucky things happen often in this game. Essentially, pawn off the bad outcome of the situation to being unlucky rather than just their play, essentially allowing their confidence to reimburse itself. Even if they did make a mistake, match time is not the time to be critical. Besides, you'll probably never play with them again anyways. The final situation we will talk about is that in the event that the enemy team is making a comeback, in this case, it is likely that more than one of your teammates is tilted or simply in a poor mood. Taking the time to reassure your team and reminding them of your success on previous rounds can often result in your team regaining composure and swinging the momentum back to your team. Try to suggest some plays that could work so that your teammates can take their mind off the fear of the comeback. The final thing that you should always do in order to be a good teammate is to stay positive. Now, I know what you guys are thinking. That is the most cliche thing I've ever heard. Obviously, I should stay positive. But guys, here's the thing. As cliche as it may sound, this is truly an essential part of being a good teammate. The most important thing you can do if you disregard the rest of this video is to remain positive throughout the entire game. Whether that means picking up your teammates after a choked round, hyping your teammate up after a big clutch, or simply acknowledging a good play, being a positive teammate does not go unnoticed. Take a moment to think about some of the worst teammates you've had in Ranked. One quality that every one of those teammates probably had was being toxic and a negative attitude. Now, I'm not saying that you should be cringy positive, but the more you commit to making only positive comments in game, the more you will notice tilting for your team and even yourself as well. And that, my friends, is how you can be a good teammate. By mastering these communication methods, not only will you have a better time during your ranked games, you'll also notice your success in games increase as well. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to drop us a like. It really helps us out. Also, make sure to subscribe to our channel if you want to keep up to date with our daily uploads. Finally, don't forget to check us out at ProGuides.com for some truly amazing coaching. This has been your host, Sergeant Frost, and I'll see you all again in the next one.